Viewed from above, the Galapagos Islands present an austere landscape. Plunging craters, barren slopes, chiseled cliffs. The coasts are boldly sculptured by the relentless action of the surf. In places, the interiors are covered with black lava flows. In others, desert. This is a harsh and arid world, a brittle and sun-baked world. One which appears to have little sign of life. But nothing could be further from the truth. Drop down lower for a closer look and it becomes clear that these seemingly inhospitable isles are full of vibrant life. An extraordinary diversity of plants and animals live in Galapagos, and even more extraordinary is how they do it. In every aspect of survival, from finding food to acquiring a mate, the physical and behavioral adaptations that make it possible are as colorful and varied as the species themselves. So suited for survival is life in the Galapagos the very lava rocks seem to come alive. Abundance of life on land in Galapagos is supported by an even greater abundance of life underwater. The surrounding seas with its rich nutrients team with a grand assortment of fish. These Creole fish are some of the most abundant fish in the Galapagos. They are a prize food of the blue-footed booby, which catches them by plunge diving. The blue-footed booby is just one of many species that feeds directly on the marine environment. The Galapagos penguin is evidence that these are the coldest waters of anywhere on the equator. This endemic bird is the most northerly found penguin in the world and most closely related to the Humboldt penguin of Peru. It is misleading to say that penguins don't fly, for they use their flipper-like wings to propel themselves through the water. Unlike the penguin, the flightless cormorant truly cannot fly, neither through the air nor underwater. Its vestigial wings are too short and it has no keel to its breastbone. It is well suited for an aquatic existence, having excellent underwater vision, dense bones, muscular legs, and web feet. The intertidal zone is fraught with avian predators. This marbled godwit is a rare visitor to the islands. But the wimbrel is more common. With its long, decurved bill, it excels at probing for crustaceans. The ruddy turnstone feeds on a wide variety of invertebrates, both on the seashore and inland. Here, an American oyster catcher stabs the sand in search of crabs. One of the most striking birds in Galapagos is the Caribbean flamingo. It feeds on brine shrimp and other small invertebrates that it filters from the mud of saltwater lagoons. Plowing through the peaceful waters, they leave a trail of kicked up sediment behind them. Sometimes they exhibit a more vigorous feeding behavior. Churning up the mud releases a greater concentration of invertebrates. The flamingo pumps the water through its bill and the food is trapped in sieve-like lamellae on either side. 
A characteristic of lagoon birds is long legs. Black neck stilts have some of the longest legs relative to body size. Gregarious, nimble, elegant, these dainty birds excel at catching lagoon fish. Another lagoon fisherman is the common egret. With its razor sharp eyes, it easily spots a school of fish. With its razor sharp bill, it easily catches one of them. A relative of the egret is the lava heron, an endemic bird most commonly seen in the intertidal zone. Lava herons feed on a wide variety of prey, but their favorite food is crab. The woodpecker finch has an entirely different way of finding food, but it is just as clever. Here it looks for insects on a moss-covered branch. But for the juicy grubs hidden inside the branch, it uses a tool. First it selects a twig of the right size and breaks it off. It then carries the twig to a hole in a branch and starts probing. In reaction to being poked, the grub moves along the inside of the branch. The finch manipulates the direction it moves. After pulling away a last bit of bark, the finch gets its reward. There are two seasons in Galapagos, one dry, one wet. The rainy season typically begins in January. For land birds, such as this small tree finch, the first rain of the season signals a new lease on life. After months of dryness and a paucity of food, there is sudden abundance. The islands turn from brown to green as perennials sprout and trees leaf out. Here a Galapagos dove walks through a smorgasbord of food plants. It will feed on the leaves, seeds, and flowers of all. The largest bird in Galapagos, the waved albatross, spends much of its time at sea. But every year, between the months of April and December, it returns to Española Island to renew relations with its lifelong partner. Pair bonding is a serious and long drawn out affair. The rituals involve elaborate bowing, bill fencing, and sky pointing. The trick seems to be synchrony. Courtship can continue for several seasons before the pair get it right and are ready to mate. Even then, practice does not always make perfect. Male frigate birds attract their mates by inflating a bright red guler pouch. Fully inflated, they look like party balloons.
The male great frigate bird can be distinguished from the magnificent frigate bird by its iridescent green scapula feathers. In the magnificent frigate, they are purple. Female Magnificent has a blue eye ring and a black bib. The female Great Frigate has a pink eye ring and a white breast extending up to the bill. A male will call out and vibrate his balloon to try to attract one of the females flying overhead. Females fly low over the colony, checking out the balloons. Eventually, a female chooses her mate and settles down. The courtship dance of the blue-footed booby is not just about showing off the feet. This stately male struts proudly about, but the female ignores his antics. Only when he sky points and whistles does she turn around. Then the dance begins. One of the largest blue-footed booby colonies is found in the crater of Daphne Island. The walls of the crater echo with the honks and whistles of the courting pairs. On the rim of the crater, a pair of Nazca boobies is established a nest with a view. Their courtship and pair bonding involves intensive allopreening. Lava gulls reveal a shocking red gape during their display. The noisy courtship often ends with the female giving the male quite the ride. The red-footed booby grips a branch with its prehensile feet. It is the only booby that nests in trees. Most red-footed boobies have pale brown plumage, but about 6% of the population is white. Red-footed boobies lay just one egg. As if making up for their solitary upbringing, Juvenile red-footed boobies become very gregarious once they have fledged. The sun sets on the Galapagos Islands like a curtain fall on the magic that has brought it to life. As the sky darkens, the desert islands retreat into the protective facade of apparent lifelessness. But even under the mantle of darkness, there is the dance of life.